Hi friends, and welcome back to Photography with Mr. D. <laughs> oh no, you can't laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't laugh. In this lesson, we're gonna be learning about the power of photojournalism the importance of photojournalism. Mainly, we're going to be talking about how to control your light to create a mood in your photos. Why is that important? Well, in the end of this lesson, you're gonna be creating a photo story about our time right now. The photography target goals that you guys are gonna have is to tell a story with a series of images. We're gonna be shooting in the dark. All the lights were off. I can bring it down here. We're gonna be adjusting our ISO, something that we haven't really talked too, too much about. So you can see from here over, um, that light is, is hitting me real nice. We're gonna be comparing and contrasting natural versus controlled light and seeing different uh, effects that we can get. So right now I'm sitting in my basement. It's dark, okay, all the lights are off. Same setting, except now all the lights are on in my room. We have a lot of overhead lights, I have some highlights over there, and I have a light to highlight over here. But you don't get the same feel in the video as you did. How I can get some pretty decent images um, just by moving this iPad around. And if you're also going to be going over different edits that you can perform post-shoot, um, that you can help create drama. So you might be asking yourself, why is this important? Why is it important to be able to create a mood in photography or to show emotion through photos? Well, you heard the old saying, a picture could tell a thousand words. Now, what during our current time could we tell a story about? I think the picture can kind of paint itself but it's going to be how you guys interpret it. And I think that that's gonna be the cool part. Now, with me, I have this question when designing this project of what comes first. Does the photo come first and then the story come? Or does the story come first and then as the artist, you try to tell that story through photographs? Well, I think it could honestly be either. But we're, let's phone a friend and see what she has to say. Hey, Mr. D, how you doing? How's quarantine life treating you? Oh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, we have a new baby over here. She's sleeping right now, life is good. So I'm finding my Zen in the back room. Oh, oh, you wanna talk about the history of photography? <laughs> Well, you came to the right person. I'd love to tell you more all about it. Um, it's actually something I used to teach when I taught history in the classroom, starting with a photograph, because I know it's cliche, but it speaks a thousand words. Um, one of my favorites was Dorothea Lange. You know, I try and talk about this all the time, with Mr. Curlow, but it kind of makes him snooze. Um, but I'd love to contribute to your lesson if you don't mind me joining in. All right, sounds good. Let's get this party started. Okay, so we're gonna look a little bit at the history of photography. Um, this started for me, I took a class in college that looked like it was gonna be super easy called the history of photography. I was like, how tough could this be? Photography's only been around since the late 1800s. How much could we really go through? Not only was it challenging, but it kind of changed me. It changed the way that I looked at the past. It changed how I viewed these collective stories of people I've never met before. And it kind of made me think about history in a way that was a little bit different. We all know that World War II started in 1939, but is that truly important to understanding what this moment in time was all about? How do you explore the human experience? How do you really write about somebody else's story with just a date? The photos give us so much more. They paint a picture for us, but they also spark our curiosity. So I think that's really important when we're looking at the history of photography. Now for the photography aspect, I know you've probably gone over a lot of where photography was born from with Mr. D.
The first real photograph came out of France in the 1890s. Um, there had been other fringe efforts before that that were not as successful. They had really long exposure times. Um, but he's really good at the techniques of photography. I mean, I'm speaking from experience. I've paid the man to take photos. Look at that work. Remember those times when we used to do our hair, and makeup, we used to go places in large groups? Those were good times. But I digress. Let's take a look at some other images from the past. I want you to think right now of one image that you know automatically from your history class something you've seen before. I have a selection here of some images that are typically covered in the history classroom. So chances are you've seen one of these images during your time studying history. These images do so much for the story of the past. They show the emotion that sometimes a timeline or a graph really dehumanizes. So we're looking to add that human aspect into an image. When you look at the migrant mother over here, you see something that can't be written. You see emotions that you can't possibly quantify. You see so much more than just, this is Florence Thompson, and she was a poor farmer on a pea farm in California during the Dust Bowl. That's fine, but what does her emotion say to you? How does it speak to you? When you look at the Hindenburg or a little boy surrendering in Warsaw, the after effects of the atomic bomb, raising of the flag at Iwo Jima, and if I drag my image over here, the infamous kiss in Times Square, um, these moments in time show us so much more. They capture an emotion. So when you guys are looking to take images and document what's happening today, which is pretty serious, and pretty comparable to some of these times that other people are living through, I want you to find inspiration in the history behind some of these very powerful photographs of the past. Today, yeah. So before we go and look at that image from Dorothea Lange, I want you to think about how photos are used in history. So why do we use them and how do we use them is the big question here. This technique of observe, reflect, and ask questions is from the Library of Congress. So it's what our national historians use to study photographs. So I want you to keep that in mind as you develop your own photograph for this time period, knowing how historians will analyze it. So remember, it's not only about the subject, but it's about the photographer, you. It's about the location, probably your home and the era that you're li living in. So there is a lot more than just what you're choosing to put as the focal point in your image. Now, the first thing that they'll look at is how do we observe the photo? That's more of the type of photo that it is. Um, what kind of caption, if you choose to include one, what you say about your photograph. We'll talk about Dorothea Lang and her um, feelings on captions. Um, who's in it, what objects, activities are there, and lastly, what kind of photography style? Is it more documentary style? Is this an amateur photographer? Or in your case, under Mr. D's instruction, it's gonna be a pretty epic photo with a lot of style to it if I know him. Or in your case, under Mr. D's instruction, it's gonna be a pretty epic photo with a lot of style to it if I know him. So after that, think about how historians will reflect on it. They're gonna ask that who, what, when, where, why, piece about the photo. So keep those questions in mind. Hopefully it'll help you decide what you want to include. And lastly over here is to ask questions. Your photo should spark curiosity. Your photo should leave people asking more questions. So if they're asking more questions, you did a pretty good job with the photo. To give you an example, if you just take a picture of a roll of toilet paper and caption it 2020, I mean, it's funny. It's worthwhile for Twitter or Instagram, maybe it's been done. But if you really wanna capture something, maybe you take that toilet paper roll and it's still a focus of an image, but it includes you and your family sitting at home. It includes you on devices or it includes you watching TV. It includes you coming up with new games and playing them in the background. Or maybe it shows you kinda of hanging out alone in your room because we do that a lot in quarantine. 
So let the photo show the image of the time. Don't just pick one piece of it and try and force that onto your viewer. Find something that evokes a question.